In this video, I will teach you about the relationship between the graph of the original function f and the derivative f prime, and the second derivative f double prime. This chart is the key because it shows at a glance the relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime. So I want you to pause and memorize this chart right now. Make sure that if you needed to, you could write this chart in the margin of your next test or quiz from memory. The parabola shown here is the graph of a function f. Circle all terms that correctly complete each sentence. At x equals 1, f of x is definitely what? And we might circle more than one term in the same row. So at x equals 1, f is definitely positive because it's here above the x-axis so it'll be positive so it's definitely uh, it's not negative it's not zero it's not increasing either because this is a horizontal tangent line so it's neither increasing nor decreasing right here so we can skip both of these um, is it concave up or down obviously this is concave down so we will also circle that Number nine, now we're talking about f prime at x equals one. Remember that f prime is the slope. So is the slope here at x equals one positive, negative, or zero? Yeah, this is a horizontal tangent line, so the slope is zero. Is the slope increasing or decreasing? An easy way to answer that is to uh, think back on the relationship between f and f prime. If f is concave up, then f prime is increasing. If f is concave down, then f prime is decreasing. And we just discussed on the previous problem that f is concave down. So that means that the slope, f prime, is decreasing. Um, we don't know anything about whether uh, f prime is concave up or concave down. So it says definitely. We don't know, so we won't circle those. Number 10, at x equals 1, f double prime is definitely what? Well, let's definitely look at the chart. The relationship between f double prime and function f is if f is concave up, f double prime is positive. If f is concave down, f double prime is negative. That's really all we know about f double prime. So, since f is concave down, that means we know that f double prime is negative. And that's all we know. This graph looks the same but there's been an important change. This is now g prime, the derivative of some original function g. Problem number 11, at x equals one, the original function g is definitely what? First of all, will it be positive, negative, or zero? So let's see, we're given g prime and we're being asked about function g. Let's consult the chart and remember the relationship between g prime and g. Actually, g prime tells us nothing about whether the original function g is positive or negative. So we can forget about those options. We don't know anything for sure about positive, negative, or zero. So what about increasing and decreasing? If g prime is positive, g will be increasing. If g prime is negative, g will be decreasing. So at x equals 1, g prime is positive. It's up here above the x-axis. Because g prime is positive, we know that g is definitely increasing. So that's the only thing we can circle. Number 12, at x equals 1, g prime is definitely what? Well, they're asking us about g prime, and that's the very graph that we are given. So we can tell a lot. 
So at x equals 1, g prime is definitely positive because it is above the x-axis. So that means it's not negative and it's not 0. We also can tell that it is neither increasing nor decreasing because this is a horizontal tangent line. So we won't circle these either, but we know that for sure. Number 13, at x equals 1, g double prime is definitely which of these? So remember, we are given the graph of g prime. So how is g prime related to g double prime? If g prime is increasing, g double prime will be positive. If g prime is decreasing, g double prime will be negative. So let's take a look. Hmm, at x equals 1, g prime is neither increasing nor decreasing. There's a horizontal tangent line here. So since g prime is neither increasing nor decreasing, that means that g double prime is neither positive nor negative. So what is it then? It must be 0. Another way to think about it is g, g double prime is the slope of g prime, just like g prime is the slope of regular g. So when we look at g double prime, we are looking for the slope of this g prime graph. And again, because of the horizontal tangent, the slope is 0. So that's another way to think about it. The graph of a function g has been provided. Use this graph to answer the questions below. Remember to justify based on the given graph, this graph. In this case, function g. Avoid ambiguous terms like it, or the graph, or the slope. Number 14, is g prime at negative 2.8, which is about right here, positive, negative, zero, or undefined? Justify your answer. So we're given the graph of g, and we are being asked about g prime. How does the graph of g pertain to g prime? Well, if g is increasing, g prime will be positive. If g is decreasing, g prime will be negative. Negative 2.8 is in an interval where g is increasing. Therefore, g prime will be positive. So we will say positive because g is increasing at x equals negative 2.8. Notice that I am specifically referring to function g. I'm not saying the function. I'm not saying it is increasing. I have to say because g is increasing at x equals negative 2.8. Number 15, at x equals 1, g prime is increasing, decreasing, or neither. Justify your answer. So again, we are given function g. So what does g tell us about whether or not g prime is increasing, decreasing, or neither? If function g is concave up, then g prime will be increasing. If g is concave down, g prime will be decreasing. So here is x equals 1. Notice that at x equals 1, g is concave up. That means that g prime will be increasing. So we would say increasing because g is concave up at x equals 1. Always be sure to use the function that you are given in your justification. So because we are given the graph of function g, our justification has to be based on function g. If you were to try to give an answer based on g prime, so let's say if you tried to say something like, well, it's increasing because the values of g prime are growing from left to right or something like that, that would be unacceptable. We are not given the graph of g prime, so you cannot refer to g prime. Number 16, find a value of k for which the following statement is true, or explain how you know no such k exists. g prime at k is equal to zero. So they're saying 
the slope is zero. Let's start with the justification. The only way the slope is going to be zero is if the original function has a horizontal tangent line. So we'll say because g has a horizontal tangent line at x equals whatever. Notice that I had to base my justification on g because that's the only graph that I have. Now look at the second part, g double prime at k is less than zero. In other words, g double prime is negative. Well, what does the original function g have to do with g double prime being negative? The original function will be concave down if g double prime is negative. So here comes the second part, and g is concave down at x equals whatever the number is. So let's find this number where g has a horizontal tangent line and g is concave down. I see horizontal tangent lines here and here, but this is the one where g is concave down. So the number we need is negative one. So we will say negative one because g has a horizontal tangent line at x equals negative one and g is concave down at x equals negative one. For the next few problems we are given the graph of h prime. So when we do our justifications we will only be mentioning h prime. Number 17, is h double prime at three positive, negative, zero, or not defined. So we're given h prime. So what does h prime have to do with whether h double prime is positive, negative, or zero? So if h prime is increasing, then h double prime will be positive. If h prime is decreasing, h double prime will be negative. At an x value of three, which is here, we see that h prime is decreasing. That means that h double prime will be negative. Your answer and justification should look like this, negative because h prime is decreasing at x equals three. Number 18, at x equals negative four, is h of x increasing, decreasing, or neither? Well, we are given the graph of h prime. So what does that have to do with whether or not the original function h is increasing, decreasing, or neither? So if h prime is positive, h will be increasing. If h prime is negative, h will be decreasing. At x equals negative four, h prime is negative. Therefore, h will be decreasing. So we'll say decreasing because h prime is negative at x equals negative four. Number 19, find an x coordinate of c at which the following statement is true, or explain how you know no such c exists. The graph of h is increasing and concave down at x equals c, justify your answer. Let's work backwards and begin with our justification. How will we know that h is increasing? Remember, we are only given the graph of h prime. So the connection is, if h prime is positive, then h will be increasing. For now, I'll say blank because h prime is positive at x equals blank. I'm leaving space here for the second condition, which is that h is also concave down at x equals c. Well, h will be concave down if h prime is decreasing. So I add on this part and h prime is decreasing at x equals blank. So we need to find this number where h prime is positive and decreasing. 
Okay, H prime is only positive during this part of the graph. Now, what part of this is decreasing? It's decreasing for this part of that. So we just need a number in here somewhere, and uh, we could use a number like, for example, negative 1 half. So putting it all together, we will say negative 1 half because h prime is positive and h prime is decreasing at x equals negative 1 half. In each problem below, sketch the graph of a function f that fits the description. You don't need to justify any answers on this page. So we need f at a to be 0. So that just means the value of the function at a will be 0. So we can just put a dot right there. f prime has to be less than 0. In other words, f prime is negative. Well, this is the slope. So it has to have a negative slope right here. So we can just simply draw a line going downhill through that point. Number 21 says f prime is negative and increasing at x equals a. Focus on this part first. f prime is negative. This is saying that the slope is negative. Well, look, that's the same thing that we said the last time. f prime is less than zero. So in the last problem, the slope was negative and I just drew a line going downhill from left to right. So can I just draw another line going downhill? Not quite because of the second part. This slope also has to be increasing. This is a constant slope, it's linear. So if I need a slope that's increasing, it's going to have to be concave up. So I'm going to draw something like this. So at A, uh, we still have a negative slope because you can see how the tangent line is downhill, but the slope is increasing as we go. Uh, if it's not clear to you that the slope is increasing, you might refer to the chart. If function f is concave up, that automatically means that f prime will be increasing. So I made it concave up so that f prime would be increasing. We should label these graphs. This is function f. Okay, number 22. f is continuous but not differentiable at a. Well, they are describing a cusp. It's going to be continuous but not differentiable. Blam! There are no breaks in this graph, so it is continuous. But because there is a cusp, there's a sharp corner here, it is not differentiable at a corner like that. So number 23, f is positive for all a. So whatever we draw, it's the whole thing is going to be positive. But f prime is equal to 0 for all a. Well, this is saying that the slope is zero. So the slope is zero and the function itself is positive. Well, that's easy. If the slope is zero, we're talking about a horizontal line. And if the function has to be positive, we just need to put our horizontal line above the x-axis. So, kabam, there you go. Oh, I forgot to label this one.